water pipe from the early days. It came out of Court Street in Keene. And this is how we got water to our houses. They would put in a hollow pipe like this to pour it out, and it would run to a community well. Now the unique thing about the pipe is when they put it together, uh, even though it's you know it's not exactly even symmetrical, it doesn't just fit in. They would slam it in with this hammer. Uh, there's supposed to be some metal caps on this. Uh, who's who's the Hulk of the group here? Oh, I think it's Sarah Hulk. Lift that, please. Oh. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's got some weight behind it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's got some weight, doesn't it? Now, you're swinging that all day long, putting pipes together. Putting the pencil end in the blunt end. That's what you do with that hammer. And that's why we have those 12 foot tall Swedish gentlemen. Because that's what they did. That's like the That's like the You can pass this around with the. Now, the nice thing they have in Clever is when they put these together, when they got wet, they'd swell and that would stop some of the water leaks. So we have a variety of different wooden pipes, different sizes. This is, uh, compared to the regular tree, this is more of a modern type. It's more of like a barrel. They would heat up these bands, and it would just kind of, when it cools down, it would shrink and hold the pipe together, and again, it would swell with the water and stop the leaks. Uh, but this isn't a very heavy pipe, this is very light comparable. And then they had little short pieces to put them together. Everybody heard of Jack and Joe? How many times are they going to roll down that hill and bump their head before they figured out, let's build a water pipe. With all the minerals, this is what happens to cast iron pipe that's not lined. This is just straight cast iron. And just these are all the minerals, water, good catch. And you can see, as always, velocity the slowest water is in the outside, and as you get into the center, the velocity of water is much quicker, and that's why we have that hole there. They got tired of that, and they said, hey, let's line the pipe. So they first did a tar lining pipe. I'm not quite sure what this material is, Charlie, but it's not, it's not really a cement. It's just kind of a painted on thing. They went from that to a cement lined duct line, which uh, it's much smoother, so you don't have that friction loss I was talking about. So this is more of the modern. We have mostly this pipe in, in the city now. There's a duct line uh, line pipe, and it works real well, and it lasts longer. This is the lake. As you can see the little peninsula there. I talked about this used to be Ford Pond, and Long Pond used to be on this side a little peninsula. They built this dam. This isn't the original, this is the second bill, but when they put up the dam, they flooded a little piece of landmass and created Pinnacle Lake. Right now, our water goes into the intake right here. We have a large bar rack that catches any large debris that gets by a little boom here. Our restriction is that inlet is only 10 feet under the water. That's where the wall is. So anything below that, we have to pump into the building. So our water shortage really is at that level, regardless of what the lake is. We go into emergency response because we got to get water into the building. So we have to lift it somehow. Right now it's naturally flooded. What we make That's here, all the fabric street, whether it's what that is, the baskets on the right hand side, there's 27 of them, they'll circulate. When we have a lot of debris in the water, we run that stream through and it's a salt washing unit. So that's our secondary to remove anything down to about a half an inch in size. Um, you can see the end of the pump laying there on the floor. The guys are cleaning it up. We'll go inside and up on the catwalk and we'll get a better look. This starts the process, the intake through the traveling screen. We have three vertical turbine pumps. They're all single stage, which means they have one impeller. They're 40 horsepower. And that is what gets the water through the entire place from here all the way down to the booster station. After we put the energy in it to lift it up one time, it flows through everything else by gravity. So it's very cost efficient for us. Before we go inside the grassy field behind the two buildings over there, that house is a 4.7 million gallon tank. 
That's our first storage area. We also do our primary disinfection in that tank. When you disinfect the water on your primary issue, you have to have what's known as contact time to allow your disinfectant to work. That provides our minimum contact time specified by the state is six hours. Yes. That tank is big enough that we get a 24 hour contact time. So it's very handy, but it also holds 4.7 million gallons of water. We monitor flow, right here on the wall, the, the beige colored component with the electronic sticking out of it is a magnetic flow meter. The mineral content in the water gives us flow without using the color. This is the beginning of the process. The water gets lifted up. It comes in from the left-hand side, goes through the traveling screen. Each of these pumps sits in an individual chamber. The water used to go straight through the wall to the right on the bottom piece of pipe. Redirected the water to the left and over the top because we wanted a flow meter on the inlet side. When we put our chemicals in the water, every water system out there paces the chemical dose rate to the flow of the water. Redirected the flow of chemical injection process starts right there behind the glass casing. That's where we put the coagulant in. The water then goes out through the bottom of the wall into the sedimentation basins outside. This is the chemical storage room. We house all of our chemicals in here that we use in the treatment process. We have polyaluminum chloride, which is our coagulant. We have sodium hydroxide, also known as caustic soda. That's for alkalinity and pH control in the process. On your right is our sodium hypochlorite tank. That is bleach. Household bleach is about between 0.5 and 3%. This stuff starts out at 12 and a half percent. This is your fluoride. This is what we put in the water for your teeth. Yes, just to state, this is the only chemical we add that is not a water quality chemical. This is straight public health. The citizens of Concord voted to use this. You guys remember down in the corner of the pump room where the pipe went through the wall? Yeah. That pipe comes up there on the far end of this concrete slab. Those black pipes sticking up are actually gate valves that go down. The water comes through and proceeds all the way across the end of this structure and gets divided four times into those going settling trays that we showed you. One of the reasons you're actually going to see creatures and fish in here and fat bowls, we no longer pre-treat with bleach. The water comes through these chains. I opened up the barrier over there so you could see that's where we collect the finished water from the process. You see the divider in the concrete here? That's where the water is flowing underneath everything. It goes all the way down to the end. It turns and comes up to the upper deck. And all the wasting and all the settling that takes place gets removed on the far end. As what we do see, here is once it settles, we have some scrapers in the tank that slowly, ever so slowly, scrapes all the sludge to the hopper, where Charlie's going to show you how we remove it. And we send all this sludge to the Concord water treatment, wastewater treatment plant. So it all goes down to the sewer to the wastewater plant to be dealt with. This is where we talked about removing this by hydraulics. When I turn the valve, it doesn't rise. The stem pushes the nut down inside the casing. There's a pipe that goes inside a pipe. All I'm gonna do is force this open-ended pipe down below the height of the water. Water head's gonna push all the dirt from the bottom back up to the top and all the ooze are going to start. The bad part is, this stuff settles on the bottom. Right now, we're pumping on average about 4 million gallons of water a day. Come August, September, when we're putting out 8 million gallons a day, we'll probably do this twice a day. Uh, and see another bottle, and then as Charlie was talking the other day, we have the grating under that, the piping for the discharge. Everything is gravity feeding. The weight of the water is pushing down through the sand. As the debris starts to build up on the filter media, the level of water will slowly start climbing. There's a bittersweet about having a lot of buildup. A lot of buildup helps remove particles, but it also slows the flow down. So we kind of try to get a balance on when to clean these filters. We went from 25 hours of cleaning to 100 hours to a cleaning. The reason we did that, as Charlie hit on it, we were doing better removal 
from the settling beds. So each process is related. You can't forget how they react with each other. This is the standard screen that the operators use because it gives them a lot of information in one place when they want to monitor things. But you'll notice there's nobody here monitoring. What we do is we specify an operator in the day for the eight hour period we're here. It's his job to operate the plant. We have programmed parameters in here with alarms on it. So for the most part, he can do the samples we need in the laboratory to commit compliance with the state. We have to do so many samples a day, such and such. But we have inline monitors, we have pH meters, chlorine meters, turbidimeters that all send their signal on low voltage DC 4 to 20 milliamp back to the computer via that panel over there. We program, program in the parameters on these screens and they'll notify him by pager when we have reached a point of concern. It's not an alarm point, but a point of concern. Then he can come up here and find out what the problem is before it creates an issue. This screen where they keep up here most of the time shows the five tanks we have throughout the city. It shows the clear well, the plant, and you can take a look at what's going on out in the system. I can look at this screen and I can tell how many pumps we're running here, which chemical pumps are operating, which mixers are running. But I can look here, the booster station down over the hill, that raises water system pressure high enough that it fills these three tanks. These three tanks are on the low service end. They're fed right off of the mains. This is what gives us a balance out in the system. We have two booster stations, pump station three, pump station six. They pump to elevated tanks. Snow Pond Tank is up by the golf course at Concord Country Club. West End Tank sits up behind the hospital. Due to hydraulics of the system, those pressures needed to be higher anyway. But by maintaining those pressures higher, it gives fire protection further out, plus the hospital. About 11 o'clock at night, they fire up their laundry. We have filter controls. You get a nice cross-section view of the filter. Each filter has an influent valve, an effluent valve, a drain valve, a wash water valve, and an air valve. That's all controlled by a program in here to do it automatically when we want to backwash it. We have been testing the operability of the filter washing itself when it wants to. We can control our chemical injection systems from here. Every component in our system, we can control from here. But some of the more important things that we can do with our system, uh, online instruments. These are all the meters that give us feedback on what's going on in the system. With one screen, we can look at the turbidity coming off of each of the filters compared to the raw water turbidity. One of the biggest things we have to do is continuously monitor the turbidities coming off of those filters for the state. Should we exceed our specified set point for more than 15 minutes? We have to do samples, we have to do backup samples, we have to prove why we exceeded out allowable limit. Point three. Which is point three. We monitor chlorine, free, total. We monitor the pH of the water. We have the ability to monitor temperatures, everything right here from one screen. So we can monitor it at all our pump stations. Everything we do at our remote stations is controlled from here. The small room behind us over here is where all our process control takes place. We do ammonia samples, we do chlorine samples, free and total. Please go in here and follow Dave and take a look. This room has changed a lot over the years. All the sample points used to be plumbed into this room so that the operator could sample everything from one small space. Over the years, they have found out that it's a mistake to pump your sample water all the way up here because it's reacting with the copper pipes, it's reacting with all the fittings, plus a lot of chemicals. When you measure pH of a water sample, how long do you have to have before you call it? About two minutes, right? What happens afterwards? You get carbonic acid forming because the water's reacting with carbon dioxide in the air and your pH is just going to continue to drop to a certain point, right? So they've come to find out that doing graph samples or using inflow analyzers at remote locations and letting them report back is the way to go. And what we also do here is we have an operator who will go around and physically take samples and bring them back here and test them with veg stops. That way we compare that with our inline analyzers to make sure everything's in sync. Charlie got into a little bit, I think, uh, talking about converting 
are chlorine, which is our primary disinfectant. We convert it to chloramines, which is a weaker disinfectant, but it lasts longer in the disinfections, in the uh, distribution system. And it also hinders the development of disinfection byproducts, the HA5 and TTHMs that uh, Charlie was mentioning. Uh, this, our monitor, we monitor the chloramines 24 seconds. All I ask is when you turn the water on your tap, just think about it in a different way than you had prior to using this. We do work hard to make it that way, so if you drink it, don't spit it out. Thank you so much. You're welcome. It's a pleasure. Anytime.